Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create the effect that I created for this video, which is a butterfly comes in, lands on a flower stem, and then transforms into the flower petals. You can see that going on here. I'm not going to go into all the detail of how it was rendered and things like that. Just simply the effect of how to animate the butterfly and then how to morph it. So to begin with, we'll create the butterfly itself. So I did that pretty simply. We'll go into orthographic view, we'll look from above and we'll add a simple plane. I'm going to go into edit mode, press Ctrl R and just subdivide that plane down the middle. It's really just to put the origin where I want it and then delete these two vertices. I'm going to make this an even simpler butterfly than I did when I created the video because we just want to understand how the effects are done. So I'll just put a few subdivisions there. That was Ctrl R to add some loops. I'll put one there and then move that in. I'm going to add a subdivision surface in a moment. So there's a basic butterfly wing and I'll press Control 1 just to add some subdivision on there. And I think I'll increase that to two subdivisions. So that's a reasonable approximation of a butterfly wing. We'll go to materials and we'll add a new material and call that butterfly wing. And we'll just give this a simple color, which will also apply to the viewport. So a simple way to create a second wing. We'll just add a modifier, which is a mirror modifier. It defaults to the X anyway. Go into edit mode and I'll just give a little bit of gap between them there, not too much. And then I'll just apply the mirror modifier. So there's our simple butterfly wings. I'm going to add an icosphere. We'll shrink that down. Put it fairly central and then I'll just extrude a body, something like that. It's going to make it fairly basic at the moment and create the neck there. And then we'll join that with the rest of the butterfly and we'll set that all to shade smooth. And of course, if we want to, we can go to face select and put a couple of antennae on him. I'm just going to press I and then E and out they come. Just something like that, just some very rough antennae. So I'll give his body control L to select all of it, its own material. We'll say plus there, we'll say new, and we'll make that a sort of very dark brown material and assign that. So we've got a distinct material between the body and the wings. So now we'll create an armature. So I'm going to add an armature, which is a single bone. I'm going to rotate it on the X 90. And then I'll just align it, make it a bit smaller with the body of our butterfly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, if we go to this little box, the context settings and go to viewport display and we click in front, we'll always be able to see our bone, even when it's inside our object, make it a little smaller, go into edit mode, select the head there and E just to extrude another bone. And we'll just take it out to about there. And then we'll do the same again. So these will obviously be the bones for our wing. So what we now need to do is connect these bones to our butterfly. So I select my butterfly, then I hold shift down and select the bones, control P and say set parent to armature with automatic weights. And with a bit of luck, that should do what we need it to do. So just select the armature again now and up here, select pose mode and you'll now be able to select individual bones. And if I rotate that bone, it is rotating the wings, although it's rotating more than the wings. So we'll just need to sort that out in a moment. And we'll just check this one. And that is also rotating the wing. So if I just rotate it on the Y axis, you can see it's just rotating the wing, but it is rotating the body as well. Go back to object mode, select our butterfly, go to vertex groups. And if we go into edit mode now, unselect everything, we can select a given bone, say select, you can see bone two, which is obviously this left hand one. I selected all of the wing, but it's selected part of the body. We unselect everything, then say bone one and say select. Same things happened again. 
and then we say bone which is obviously the first bone we created and say select and that does have the whole body selected so all we need to do now is actually go to this bone and say remove and then this one and say remove and now if we select that one and say select you can see it's just the wing and that one is just the other wing so now if I rotate on the y-axis in pose mode it's just the wing that moves which is what we want so now we need to create the animation so we'll use flat as the low end of the wing movement we'll select both of our bones and we'll press I and we'll record rotation I had my wings flapping fairly quickly so if you think for an average 25 frames per second animation 25 frames would be one second probably want the wings flapping multiple times a second so let's give just to make it fairly slow 10 frames for a single cycle of wing flaps so it starts here at frame one we then come along to frame five you can just type it in there of course and that's when the wings are going to be at their highest point rotate y minus 80 and then select the other one rotate y 80 because it's the other way let's just have a look at that that looks fine select both again press i and record rotation and then go to frame 10 rotate y 80 to put it back down again and rotate y minus 80 select them both and again record rotation so we've now got a full cycle of wing flap just does it once now I know there are quick options up here for animation and so on but for what I want to do I'm just going to pull down another window here and change this to the nonlinear animation menu and you can see we've got a little clip of animation here but obviously we want it to flap more than once so the first thing I want to do is click here to push down the action on top of the NLA stack that NLA being nonlinear animation so that's created a little animation cell there what I now need to do is add some modifiers to it so if I press N that brings up a little window on the right hand side and you can see it starts at frame 1 and ends at frame 10 and if we scroll down we can see there's both a scale and a repeat function so if I change that to 2 you can see that got twice as long and the wing will flap twice so depending on how long your animation is mine's 10 frames and the, animation, the overall animation is the default of 250 frames so let's put this to 25 and if I now press play you can see our wing starts flapping nicely so that's very simple animation of our butterfly the armature won't render when you render it but what we can also do is put that into a new collection if we want to so that we can turn it off when we don't want to see it so what we can do if we want, don't want to always be able to see that armature is just press M say move to new collection and we'll call that collection armature we'll just say OK on that and now if we unclick the little tick here that armature disappears we'll have it visible for the moment now we only recorded rotation on this armature so we're free to make this butterfly move around but before we do that let's just put the armature over there which of course will take the butterfly with it and we'll rotate him this way and we'll add a simple icosphere and this will be the center of our flower we'll go to vertex options I just pressed control plus there and now E and GZ and I'm just going to pull that down a little bit just to give us a stem control R add a few loops and then just move them around a little bit so the stem is not completely straight if you want to you can turn on proportional editing with O and we can have our flower off at an angle slightly and we'll add a subdivision surface on there we'll give that stem material we'll make that obviously green and we'll also do a bait there we'll, we'll add another material which will be stamen and we'll make that a nice orangey yellow so it's a very basic flower stem but we also need to build our flower so again I'm just going to move my flower stem out of the way for a moment we'll add plane I'm going to in edit mode add a loop cut there delete the edge vertices and then just move it along the y-axis just to put that origin about there 
going to bring that end in a little bit. You'll see what I'm doing in a moment. Putting a few cuts in. I'm not going to have lots of flowers in the scene, so I'm not too worried about having a few vertices here. Bring that in slightly and that one in slightly as well. And then unsurprisingly, I'm going to add a mirror modifier and subdivision surface. I'm now going to apply the mirror modifier, selected the central row of vertices, and with proportional editing on, I'm just going to add a little bit of shape to the petal. And now we'll give it a color. And I think what we'll do is initially we'll give it the same color as the butterfly wing, but it needs to be a unique material because there are some extra bits that are added to it later on. So we'll call that flower. So that's the basic petal. And if you were going to do a lot of petals or a lot of flower, different flowers, you'd probably use arrays and things like that, which is what I use to create flowers and leaves around stems. But as this is a very basic flower, I'm just going to do it in a very simple way. We just want to give the flower a little bit of twist now. So we'll rotate it up slightly. But we'll also look from this side and we'll put a slight twist in that direction on it. And now Shift D. Rotate Z180, GY, and just move it back a little bit. Select them both, Shift D, rotate Z90. Have a look at that, that's not too bad. And then select them all, Shift D, rotate Z45. Now you can take a bit more time to create your flower than that. Uh, you can spend a bit more time making sure they don't overlap quite as much as this one does, but it gives you the general idea. And now you're just going to join them together to make the single flower. We'll move it over our flower stem and rotate it at an appropriate angle. So very roughly, we'll call that flower, and we need to name our butterfly as well. And we'll call that butterfly. So we've made good progress there. I think perhaps we'll make our flower a little smaller and perhaps make our butterfly a little bigger. Just check it's still flapping fine. Yes, it is. So we're now ready to get our butterfly to come and land where our flower is. So I'll just grab the armature, put that over here. We'll make it very simple. I'll put a slight angle on the butterfly and we'll make sure we're at the beginning of the animation and we'll press I and record the location. We'll decide how long we want the butterfly to be flying in. So 25 frames is one second. So maybe three seconds we'll have it flapping. So we'll take that up to 75 there and we'll bring the butterfly in there. And we can have it change its angle a little bit. As we've changed the angle, we will need to record the rotation of the armature. Then we'll go to 75 frames or about three seconds. We'll bring the butterfly in and we'll rotate him a little bit more as if he's landing on the stem and we'll record both the location and the rotation. We go back now and we press play. In comes our butterfly and by default he should slow down slightly as he arrives because the interpolation, the default interpolation is for a Bezier curve to accelerations. He does slow down slightly at the end which is just right. And he sits there flapping until he's not there anymore. So we now know that he's going to reach the flower at 75 frames. So now what we need to do is select the butterfly body itself, not the armature, hold shift and select the flower and then click object up here, quick effects, quick explode. And under here, change that to blend. You can change the number of pieces here. You can change the duration here. The start frame, if you're on the right frame, should be the frame you want it to begin at. It is possible to correct these things later, but it's a little bit harder if you've got to do it yourself. The end frame obviously is 50 frames on and the velocity with which the parts move. I find just leaving that at default was fine and leave fade ticked and it will make some modifications to your materials. So if we change this, that's two seconds. That might be a little slow to perhaps 20 frames, which means the end frame will only be 95. So if we go to a few frames before, I'll come out of orthographic view name and press play, you can see the butterfly morphs as it approaches. So as it just about gets to frame 75, it starts to fall apart and those parts go to make up the flower. 
And that's all done with particle systems. So if you need to make some tweaks to it, if you come back to where the butterfly is visible and go to particle systems, you can see the particle system there. And you can see the particles are being generated and ending at frame 75, and they're existing for 20 frames. So you can make modifications here, but don't forget, there's also a particle system on the flower with the same settings. So if they have different settings, you may get slightly different effects. That's why it's better just to use the quick effects if you can, and then that'll all be set up for you. So just a little point about the materials. When you render, rather than particles of one disappearing and appearing elsewhere, you actually get some extra bits added into your materials for you by using that quick effect. So the default material that I created was just this. So it just adds the principal shader and just connected it straight into the surface. But what that quick effect has done, I don't know why it always does it in a rather untidy way, but there you go. It uses an attribute called explode fade. It takes one element of it, the X, and puts it through a color ramp. And that's used to control whether we display our material, in this case, just the principal shader, or we switch to transparent. So in other words, it literally makes the parts become invisible over time. If I add a simple sun to my scene and we go to rendered view and I'll turn my armature off and I'll also turn this off and then we can just see the object itself. So here comes the butterfly. There it's broken into little pieces. And if you try and watch one of those pieces, you can now just about see there's some new pieces just fading into visibility and then they all go and coalesce into our flower. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, let me know and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, let me know. If you enjoy these tutorials, don't forget to click like and subscribe. I also have a Facebook page and a Twitter account, and I now have a Patreon page as well. And I'll provide links to all of those in the description below. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot.